While insider trading is illegal for all of us, you and I and Martha Stewart would go to prison for doing insider trading, the law really does not apply to Congress or congressional staff. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlie Jaffe and you're watching The Current. Today we'll be discussing campaign finance reform and government ethics with Dr. Craig Holman from Public Citizen, followed by GU Occupy's take on the issue. But first, let's go to Mitchell with Student on the Street. Thanks, Charlie. I'm Mitchell, here on the street asking students what they think about American politics and transparency. Political rhetoric in the United States has shifted away from actually evaluating how a person would what political actions a person would take that would be good and focuses too much on the scandals in their private life and I think the two aren't necessarily linked. I think the expectation that they should act morally you know in all bounds is relevant only in that when we elect them they are in a position of power where their morality and their decisions um, will have pretty big effect. It's a public leader and public leaders are not private citizens and to a certain extent I think that what we expect of them is the best representation of our society, and I think that requires morality in some sense. I don't think uh, acting immorally in your private life necessarily indicates you'll act immorally uh, when in office, but I do think it sort of increases the chances. Uh, if you're likely to be corrupt in your personal affairs, uh, I think it's someone more easy to sway uh, with corrupt means once they're in office. <laughs> Hi, I'm here with Dr. Craig Holman, Senior Government Affairs Lobbyist at Public Citizen and expert in government ethics and campaign finance reform. Craig, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, glad to be here. So you've testified before Congress a number of times. When you go there, what do they want to know from you? Uh, part of my role at Public Citizen is I do extensive research of the role of money in politics. So I'm always brought in as the reformer advocating campaign finance reform or governmental ethics reform or lobby reform. So what's wrong with the outcomes of the system currently in place? Uh, the outcomes are swayed too much by what goes into the system. The fundamental flaw that we have in, in our current democratic system is we rely upon private special interest money to elect our office holders. And as a result, there is this direct conflict between the public interest, us, versus the private interests who pay for the elections of our office holders. Many of us are unfamiliar with the Citizens United case. Could you give us a little bit of background on this? The five justices on the Supreme Court, the five conservative justices on the Supreme Court, have decided for the very first time when it comes to First Amendment rights that corporations are to be treated as people under the First Amendment of the Constitution. That ruling has changed everything when it comes to our financing of elections. The American media scrutinizes the private lives of our political leaders. However, few are ever held accountable. How does this affect our political system? It is very much at the heart of, the, of corruption that we see going on in Congress. You know, I'm not going to declare that really even most members of Congress are corrupt. I believe almost every member of Congress arrive here with an intent to try to improve something, to try to make a better democratic system. But they're stuck in a whole money chase game while insider trading is illegal for all of us, you and I and Martha Stewart would go to prison for doing insider trading, the law really does not apply to Congress or congressional staff. Senators who are traders, active traders, enjoy a 12% higher rate of return than the market. Uh, House members enjoy a 6% higher rate of return than the market. Either they are geniuses when it comes to trading on the stock market, or they know something we don't know. Keeping this in mind, polls have shown that 80% of Americans disapprove of the way Congress is doing its job. And something's got to give here. How do you think that we should approach this problem? By the way, uh, the figure is even worse than that. Uh, if you take a look at the other side, only 9% of Americans have any confidence in Congress doing the right thing. 
Do you know that's lower than the percentage of Americans who have confidence in Fidel Castro? What Congress needs to do is a lot of the campaign finance and governmental ethics uh, uh, reforms to, uh, to provide some confidence to the American public that they're acting in the public's interest and not in the private interest. So where do you see things going in, over the course of the next five years? Hopefully we're going to see change happen really quickly. I've never seen this type of partisan deadlock before, ever since I've been on the Hill. I mean, this is the worst I've ever seen. 2012 has got to fix that, one way or the other. Even if the Republicans take over, maybe they'd start seeing the light of allowing disclosure. If the Democrats can uh, fight back and hang on to the White House and you know maybe make some inroads in, in Congress, they will support reform legislation. So it isn't just the next five years, it's the next one year. 2012 is gonna be a watershed. Well, Craig, thank you so much for coming in and it's been enlightening. Sure, it was a pleasure being here. Hi, I'm here with Madeline Collins, a member of Georgetown's Student Occupy movement. Madeline, what is GU Occupy? GU Occupy is a student-led initiative on campus to raise awareness and support for the Occupy movement at Georgetown through attendance at general assemblies and trips to Occupy DC. Occupy DC has been seeking to address lobbies and the big money they represent in the political process. What should we know about these groups? One of our big problems is uh, the revolving door that exists between um, regulatory agencies and corporations. There's a very unfair and immoral um, relationship between corporations and the federal government that's also been exacerbated by the Citizens United Supreme Court decision of a couple years ago. What issue do you take with the interaction between corporations and politics? As corporations' role in politics grows larger, um, the influence of money on politics also grows larger and the voices of individual Americans become less powerful. So what steps can be taken to reduce the role that corporations play in politics? We could reverse or lessen uh, the Citizens United case, enact campaign finance reform, and draw a clear line between commercial banking and investment banking. And all of this would increase the power of the individual voter to elect his or her government. Great. Thanks so much for joining us today. Back to you, Charlie. That's our episode. I'm Charlie Jaffe, and you've been watching The Current.